Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a really cool looking procedural damaged wall shader in Blender. Um, you can see here the idea is kind of like if you've ever seen old buildings where there's been a lot of wear and tear and damage to a wall. So we're going to have the outer plaster slash paint and then over here we have kind of like the inside grayish gravel from the cement and then you kind of see a little bit of pink coming through from the underlying um, clayish kind of brick. So I think this is a fantastic beginner tutorial, very simple to do. And I'm gonna show you the node setup here is not too crazy. So I think for the results we're getting here, this is pretty simple. I will be putting the final shader onto my Patreon as well. That's in the description if you wanna join that. Um, but that being said, let's um, jump in and make this procedural damaged wall shader in Blender 4.3. So we're gonna set up a really simple scene to demonstrate this material. We're gonna go ahead and select the default cube and tabbing into edit mode, just right click and go subdivide and then come over here to subdivide tab. Let's give it 35 or well, maybe that's a bit much. Let's maybe go with like 20 cuts. And after 20 cuts, let's just take the um, smoothness all the way up to a value of one. Let's drop down and let's tab out. Now you're probably wondering if I wanted a sphere, why didn't I just go shift A and add in a UV sphere? And that is because we'll get this kind of weird pinching that happens at the top because of the triangulated faces at the top. So what we get here in this case is a more consistent mesh, which is gonna make things a lot better with our displacement. Okay, so that's answering that question if, it, if anybody is wondering. So let's right click also and go shade smooth. Now we're gonna go over to our render engine. We are gonna be working in cycles. So we're gonna take it and change it to cycles. And if you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. If not, you could stick to CPU. It's just gonna be a little bit less of a performance. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit longer to render, but you should still get away with it. It should be fine. And um, then we're gonna go down to our render settings here. We're gonna make sure our max samples are, I would say about 55. Honestly, um, you can go a bit higher, because I have denoising enabled, I found that 55, I still get an okay result. Now I'm doing tutorials, so I keep it on the lower end. You could go ahead, take that up to 120, 200, up to you. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into our camera view. We're also gonna go shift A, and we're gonna go to our light options, add in an area light, and then go G, Z, and move it up. Now this is what I like to do. I like to go to my light settings, change it to about 120 or so, and I'm gonna increase the size to about two, maybe even three meters in this case. And I'll go over here to the transform pivot, change it to 3D cursor. And if this light here, I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate and double, double tap R. And now I can rotate and I'm gonna keep doing that. Shift D, double tap R. I'm gonna have these lights kind of coming from the back and I keep duplicating and rotating just to add some nice rim lighting. So if we now go Z and you go rendered, you can see there's some nice rim lighting from the back. Gives you a good result. Then I'll just grab the top light again, shift D, double tap R, and this time I'll just rotate one kind of coming from the side, and I'll bring that down to just 100. So now we have the sort of lighting setup. Also, another personal preference thing, I like to go to my render settings, just go down to the film, and make it transparent, so we have a transparent background. You don't have to do that, it's just my personal preference, keeps things a bit cleaner. So now I'm gonna select the actual object here. We wanna go over to our modifiers, add modifier, search and type in sub, and give it a subdivision surface. Under the advanced here, um, let's just make sure that these quality steps here is at least free, which it is, that's all good. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna go to our materials tab. Because we use the default um, cube here, it already has a material. So we're just gonna go, and we're just gonna go ahead and click here, and let's just name this um, default material that comes with um, wall underscore damaged. Okay, it's good to name your materials so you know if you put them in asset library what they are. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our shading workspace. We're gonna go into our camera view, we're gonna press Z and go rendered. And now let's select our actual sphere here. We're gonna drag this up a little bit and we're gonna start making our material. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to search, we're gonna type in noise and we're gonna get a noise texture, not a white noise, okay? People make that mistake sometimes, just go for the noise texture. Place it over here and we're gonna take the method here from FBM, which I have no idea what that stands for, but we're gonna go down and we're gonna change it to multifractural. Okay, so there we go, multifractural. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the factor and plug it into the base color. Remember we do, we are in rendered mode here, so we went Z and went rendered. And let's go ahead, shift, shift A, search and get a color 
ramp, so just type in color and go to color ramp, place it on this cable, and then drag this value up over here to about just before the middle. I'm gonna click on it and we're gonna make it kind of like a, might say a medium kind of gray with a little bit of a brownish tinge. Then we're going to drag this value down here and we're going to make this guy over here kind of like this sort of color. Just a little bit down into red. I don't know if you call it beige or whatever. Around about here. Click plus again and then drag this new slider up. And this one we're just going to make that kind of like a gray that is not too saturated. Okay? Or not too light in value. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, that looks terrible. So we're gonna go ahead now and adjust some of the settings here. Okay, so let's come. I'm gonna change the scale to seven. I'm gonna take the detail and make it 10. I'm gonna make the roughness 0.74. Okay, so you can see we're getting some nicer looking results now. But that just gives us our color here. What we actually want as well is some actual displacement. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here to this material output. We're gonna go shift A, search and get a displace. So just type in displace. Plug the displacement into displacement, pretty easy. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go shift A, search and get a color ramp again. And we're gonna place the color ramp, I guess at this point, just before the principal, so right here. And we're gonna take this color and drag it and plug it into the height over here, okay? And at which point we're gonna come here to the noise texture and we're gonna take the factor and drag it into this new color ramp over here. And already you see this is the results we're gonna get, but we wanna do a little bit more here with the um, color ramp. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna drag this value up, and we're gonna make it a bit lighter in value. Maybe even a little bit more, there we go. And then we're gonna come here and drag this slider down to about here, and we're gonna change that to a lighter kind of gray. And then we're gonna go plus, add one more slider in, move it up, and this one we're just gonna make white, okay, a light value. And we'll kind of keep this one just about here, this one just about here, and maybe pull this guy up just a little bit. So this is what we have, okay? Now we can always come in here and adjust this just later. So the more you bring this down, you can see we have more of the, um, less of the uh, um, crack, and more of the outside paint showing. So you can kind of play around with that, but I kind of prefer to keep it just about here. Okay, so that's looking really good. And what we can do to make this look even better is we can go ahead, Shift D to duplicate this guy, move it on top. And let's take that factor and drag it in here as well. If you hold in Shift and you hold in right click, you can click and drag and just cut these two together. Just neatens it up a little bit. And then we're gonna go Shift A, search and type in bump and get a bump, and we're gonna plug the color into the height, and then plug this normal into the normal, just right over here. And here we wanna get rid of the middle um, label here, this little tag, and we're gonna drag this down. We're gonna make this one at the bottom white, and this one at the top, we're gonna make it kind of like a dark gray, like that. Okay, as you can see, this is what we have. And we're gonna make the strength 0.8, and then what we can do, we can drag this color ramp at the top up. I'm gonna duplicate this color ramp over here, plug the factor directly into here, and then this color is going into the roughness. And in this case, we're gonna swap these two values around. So we have the darker one kind of in the middle, and this one towards the end. And that kind of gives us the reflectivity that we're looking for. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention is obviously this would look better, but we forgot to do something, okay? I forgot to show you something. Um, we're not actually seeing the displacement yet, believe it or not. We actually need to select this. Quickly go to our materials tab, and this is the magic bit. Now you're gonna love this. We're gonna go down to the settings, and we're gonna come here to where it says um, displacement. We're gonna change it from bump only to displacement and bump. And boom, okay, it's looking good. So you're gonna come over here, make sure the scale is 0.1, and now it's not looking as crazy. Now you can see this is what we have. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna go in back into solid view and obviously make sure to save this. And what you can do now, and by the way, actually I'll just mention this before we render because I guess it is important. I'm gonna select the sphere. I'm gonna go to my modifier here. You can bump the render in the viewport up as well if you want. So I'm gonna take it up to free, but 
the higher you put that value, um, obviously the more processor intensive it's gonna be. But for now, I'm just gonna bump that up to three. Two should work fine anyway. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go render, and I'm just gonna render the image. And here we have it, a damaged wall material. Um, so yeah, this would be fantastic if you're doing like sort of like a game environment and you wanna kind of create this sort of procedural material, then you can kind of bake it onto a texture if you want. But you can see it kind of has the idea here of like some outer plaster and paint. Then in the inside here, we see the kind of concrete and then maybe a little bit of the pink coming here through the clay brick. And um, it's usually just kind of that destructed kind of wall material. Now over here, if I zoom in, it's a little bit low resolution. Um, so obviously I could probably move the camera in closer and then just give it another render. Yeah, but as you can see, it's just a fantastic, simple, destructed wall material. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be putting this blend file on my Patreon. So those of you on the Patreon supporting the channel, you'll get access to this. If you've enjoyed this, give this video a like, subscribe. You definitely will like my content. I cover everything from animation, motion capture, um, rigging, sculpting, cloth simulations, water simulations, particle simulations, hair simulations, doesn't matter. I've got a ton of stuff on there. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check it out. I'll see you guys next time.